Hey guys, hello everyone and welcome to the channel. So in this video, I'm going to talk about physical chemistry, how you can prepare your physical chemistry, especially for CSI net exam. And I'll be talking about with the recent changes in the exam pattern, which I have seen the way how questions are asked in the exam. Uh, taking that in care, I'll be talking about things here. Also, I'll not be dropping with a lot of books, names and all the things over here. I'll be talking about more practical stuff so that in the limited time you can perform well and you can in, like improve your physical chemistry all right before starting i have already discussed about organic chemistry and inorganic chemistry on this channel itself the videos are there in the i button you can click and watch those videos i have discussed about them in detail like how you can improve them and what are the things which you need to take care of okay with this video i hope it is going to be most important for those uh, who probably don't have mathematics background uh, bio students and those who are like those who have left mathematics from their class 10th or 12th and they are not in touch with that so that itself gives idea in their mind that they have a predefined idea that physical chemistry is tough okay so i just want to make this clear first of all that physical chemistry is not tough okay it's not difficult it is one of the easiest part among all three okay organic inorganic and if you talk about all three of them physical chemistry is the easiest one why i'm saying so see for organic chemistry you might have already seen it gives a lot of negative marks why because the way how a csir puts up the question they try to confuse you with the stereochemistry and you get confused over there among two options and in most of the cases you choose the wrong one and it gives it gives you a lot of negative marks over there goes if you ask about inorganic chemistry now they have started asking questions in so much detail that if you need to answer those questions you should have a thorough knowledge of the chapter in detail and that's what makes inorganic chemistry difficult but if you talk about physical chemistry it is more of a straightforward thing why because if you solve a question and you get an answer there are 90 percent chance that that is and if you got, got an answer from the from the options there are 90 percent chance that that answer is correct and you are doing it correctly okay only uh, the thing required over here is practice okay physical chemistry is most mostly done with the help of practice and this is i'm telling you uh, like from my own experience uh, i had a organic chemistry specialization during my masters but when i gave my csi net exam for the first time i realized that organic chemistry is giving me a lot of negative marks okay so i like i try to minimize the questions in uh, the exam from the organic chemistry portion and i improved my physical chemistry in the next cycle i performed well now that is of course a, something about 2017 so i don't want to uh, i don't want you to repeat that same over here but the overall idea remains same okay physical chemistry is not difficult if you give ample amount of time on that okay so since i am teaching physical chemistry from long and that's why i can explain you in more detail from topic wise okay uh, before going into that we have a batch running for physical chemistry on our app and on our website you can reach out to over there from the link given in the description of this video and you can enroll yourself in that batch uh, in the gamma batch i have covered physical chemistry especially from the csr net and gate level i have covered all the important topics in detail lecture you also have a lot of mock test so the practice comes over here and then you have full length mock test for physical chemistry so that you get to know that whether you have performed or you know the topic in detail or not or whether you are able to handle multiple different types of questions or not so do enroll yourself into the course if you feel that you need help with physical chemistry now coming to the topic and talking about physical chemistry topic wise so see i divide it in a way that there are certain topics which require some knowledge or some uh, basic understanding because from there there are a lot of questions which are asked from you know from a little bit of detail of that uh, those topics are like uh, group theory okay uh, group theory also like it requires a lot of practice but then you have to visualize the molecule you have to visualize the molecule in three dimension you should know that how a molecule looks sometimes instead of asking about molecule they start asking about the orbitals so you should know how orbitals look so symmetry and group theory is something which require uh, like a lot of imagination and it is it has nothing to do with mathematics like least to do with mathematics okay so actually group theory is, itself is a topic of mathematics but for the chemistry portion a lot of thing can be done if you visualize the molecule in 3d and you don't have to you know solve something on paper and you don't have to remember formula over there so that is first chapter which you should do if you are good at imagining molecule if you are not you should watch some videos on youtube or some places there are certain website like chemtube 3d that's a website 
which can make a molecule in 3D that can give you a molecule in 3D and you can visualize it by rotating the molecule using your mouse that gives you a better idea how a particular molecule looks. Now of course they have a limited number of molecules they, they have a limited number of molecules in their library so you can only select those molecule but they have almost all the symmetry groups present in their molecule uh, in their library okay so you should definitely check for that so group theory is something which is totally different from all the topics of physical chemistry a lot of imagination a lot of thinking about axis symmetry and all the things now the next step of uh, topics are where you do not require the concept understanding like you do not require the in-depth understanding of the concept if you just know the overall overview of it if you just know certain formula if you just remember certain formula and how to apply them you will be able to do those questions okay and you will be done with those topics those topics are like solid state chemistry uh, then some part of chemical kinetics uh, then you have electrochemistry surface chemistry polymer chemistry nuclear chemistry so all these are top topics although they are not having individually they are not of high weightage but if you combine all of them they are like 30 40 percent of your physical chemistry course so these are the topics where you require a lot of practice okay more of practice you just have to remember some formula and you need to solve questions related to that okay uh, even I, I would say the same for thermodynamics as well so these are certain topics where you have to remember formula and you should know how to apply them although in thermodynamics instead of numericals you also have some derivations over there so some sort of mathematics comes in thermodynamics i i definitely acknowledge that but the other topics which i said they do not require a lot of derivations and differentiation over there of course the formula are derived and you will see a lot of videos where people are deriving the formula but you do not remember you do not need to remember the derivation in case if you forget the formula you definitely the derivation helps you but when you are preparing and when you have limited time you should make a formula sheet you should remember the formula and you should practice upon how to apply those formula to solve questions okay again i'm telling those topics name solid state kinetics electrochemistry surface chemistry polymer chemistry nuclear chemistry these are all the topics which i uh, which require a lot of practice okay then as i said thermodynamics when you go to thermodynamics be it statistical thermodynamics or uh, be it chemical thermodynamics or be it phase equilibria these are the three chapters which require uh, derivations you you should know how a formula can be derived because generally the question are asked based upon the differential formula of one uh, like for example they might ask you that what is the unit of certain thing or they might ask you something from the second equation of state so there also you have to remember a lot of equations and also how you can convert one equation to the other equation okay uh, or one form to the other form it becomes easy with practice again you do not have to do numericals in that case but you need to do or you need to see how these uh, changes are made and i have tried to make that clear and easy in my classes i have I'll, i have that's why i have explain this uh, thermodynamics in a lot of different videos and in more detail over there so these topics require a lot of understanding and a lot of detail that's why in the batch in the gamma batch you will find these classes having a lot of co like a lot of videos in this particular topic okay then there is a topic of uh, molecular spectroscopy molecular spectroscopy is something where a lot of understanding is needed okay you have to understand the concept of rotation you have to understand the concept of vibration the energy levels there are certain things which you need to of course memorize but then it is equally important to understand the energy levels in a molecule and if you understand the fundamental of it like how a rotational level has certain vibrational level in it and how a transition is made among them and which are allowed transition which are forbidden transitions then how a rotational vibrational molecule or rotational vibrational uh, like motion is uh, visualized in molecular spectroscopy so these are certain things and then again Raman spectroscopy so these are certain concepts which require understanding and they are not merely uh, done with the help of formula of course at the end of the day you have formula for them and you have to remember them but how those formula are derived and what is the logic behind them that is important and it is not only important for CSIR point of view but if you are preparing and you want to pursue your career in research be it in any field if you want to do research in organic chemistry or inorganic chemistry it doesn't matter if you don't know molecular spectroscopy um, then that will be difficult for you in your research because I have seen my friends uh, who have done let's say who are organic uh, like synthetic organic chemist 
but then they have to understand or they have to resolve uh, uh, absorption spectra of a certain molecule they have to uh, like explain how a shoulder band is coming like these are the things or these are the challenges which comes during your research so the better understanding of this concept gives you a good idea when you are doing research in this field so be it in any field organic inorganic or any field if you're planning to do your uh, or planning to pursue your career in the field of research then molecular spectroscopy is a chapter which you should take very seriously and try to understand it in very detail i have a lot of youtube videos also related to molecular spectroscopy and i have tried to explain the things in more detail over there you can even watch them but if you want even depth knowledge of that and want a lot of questions to solve with those then those are there in my gamma batch you can definitely come over there uh, the next topic which is the elephant in the room and that is quantum chemistry okay so i have seen students avoiding quantum chemistry and i don't understand the reason see the thing is that i know there is a very important phrase and a very famous phrase that if you think that you understand quantum chemistry then probably you have not understood quantum chemistry and uh, that is because quantum chemistry itself is a weird thing and uh, it's a different world things happen according to certain postulates throughout the quantum world things keep on happening which you don't see in your real life for example understanding a uh, kinematics or understanding newtonian physics is easier because if you drop a ball or if you throw a ball on a wall it will bounce back you know and that's what newton tells you or newtonian physics tells you but in quantum chemistry if you throw a ball on the wall there are probability or there is a prob probability that it is going to uh, cross the wall and it is going to go to the other room that's called quantum tunneling so a lot of things happen in quantum chemistry which are weird which we don't see in the real world and that's why accepting them understanding them takes time but there is a way of handling it for the exam point of view uh, you do not have to uh, cover the complete quantum chemistry there are certain por portions of quantum chemistry that are scoring and that you can do for example the valence bond theory portion of it where you see the overlap integral then uh, hybrid orbitals how to find out the wave functions there is huckel molecular orbital approach uh, how to find out the highest energy level just it is just based upon uh, the number of radial nodes in there or that's the change in the uh, orbitals over there okay so you can find out that how many nodes are there and based upon number of nodes you can tell which energy level it is then there are certain particle problem for example particle in a box it is relatively simpler particle in 1d bo box particle in 2d box particle in 3d box these are relatively easier and straightforward things if you understand molecular spectroscopy these things become much easier to understand and then if you get question related to that you should be able to do them uh, there are some uh, difficult part of it for example uh, like uh, the portion where you have hydrogen atom problem it's little challenging but again over there there is a type of question which is generally asked in csr net exam and that is easy to approach to find out the value of n l and m that is for finding out the number of quantum numbers like principal quantum number azimuthal and spin quantum number that can be done if you have a given with a wave function and those shortcut tricks i have already explained in my youtube channel so you can definitely watch those videos all you have to do is search for quantum chemistry and the name of my channel which is all about chemistry and you will get all the videos related to quantum chemistry and you can watch them all right then there is a part which is theories perturbation theory variational theory uh, these also I have tried to explain them in on my YouTube and I have tried to explain them in a simpler way so that it becomes easy for you to solve questions related to, related to that. Especially I would say for, uh, uh, for the questions from variational principle, the video which I have made, I have explained certain like four or five types of question and every year you will see only those type of questions are asked in different language or in different way. They ask similar type of question because from the variational principle, you cannot... Uh, or there are very less chances of making very different question okay the, the type of question is repeated every time so if you practice those five or six type of question you are good to go to do questions from variational principle so these were certain things which i wanted to tell you about the topics now i'll tell you certain books from where you can practice okay of course there are various different books which are there and if you want to study the concept in detail there is a book by atkins you can follow that it's a very thick book it will take a lot of time of yours to cover that but if you are interested in physical chemistry you should definitely read atkins that is one of the book which i have referred during my preparation and i keep on referring that for understanding any new concept so and also there is an indian version which is uh, 
a book by uh, Puri Sharma and Pathania. That's a very good book. Uh, it also has a lot of uh, concepts explained in an easier way. And there are good examples also. So you can follow that book as well if you want to understand certain concept in detail. Okay. But again, if you want to practice because for physical chemistry, as I said, practice question or practicing question is more important. Okay. So you can follow book by KL Kapoor. That's one of the book which has a lot and lot of questions. Okay. And I will not suggest you to just directly jump to the unsolved questions or the questions for practice at the end of the chapter. Rather, start from the examples. Like when you open a particular, there are like seven volumes of it, but you don't have to go to the volume six and seven. Those are for the computational uh, chemistry and those part are not from the exam point of view. But for the first five parts, uh, you can like download the PDF of those books and see that uh, let's say if you have taken a chapter of solid state so you will see that there are examples okay of in between of the topic like once a topic is explained there are some examples solved examples given so you have to see those question and without looking into their solution you have to be honest with you and try to solve it uh, look at the formula which is used and try to solve that question okay or for the initial time you can the first step is to make a a list of formula okay with the chapters which i said so make a list of those uh, formula from those chapters and then open kl kapoor and go for that question go for the example and try to solve it yourself there are certain questions in which they have applied a lot of shortcuts to solve it but you do not have to worry about it try to solve it in your own way and see whether you are getting the right answer or not that will give you a lot of boost to your preparation okay so handling physical chemistry is not difficult i will be making more in depth video uh, about this particular thing in a video where I'll be talking about that how to tackle different types of question in physical chemistry that will be a more in-depth video for it but for now I just wanted to inform all of you about it that there are ways in which you can improve your physical chemistry without hesitating from it or without running away from it okay if you want to score good marks if you want to like avoid negative marking in exam then physical chemistry is going to be one of your friend or one of the best part of chemistry which can give you a good number of marks without giving you negative marks that's what my experience is and that's what many students have already told me like every year i i used to get this uh, like students tell me about it so that's it for uh, this video from my side and uh, i will see you guys in the next video till then have a great day bye bye take care if you have any other question you can ask them in the comment section below if you have any query regarding any particular thing you can reach me out on my Instagram. The link is there in the description of this video. You can directly come up to me over there in my DM and we can have a discussion over there. So that's it from my side for this particular video. I will see you guys in the next one. Till then, have a great day. Bye-bye. Take care.